In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Uh, before I get into this talk on temptation, I want to uh, I want to revisit the last video that I did, and I kind of want to reiterate a point that uh, 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 that I was making about you know listening and paying too much attention to all these seers and all these messages. Um, I I feel they're going to increase. Okay, I think you're going to see a lot more people pop up, but you're going to see people fall at the same time. Um, one of the things that I wanted to share in that video was a dream that I had a number of years ago. And uh, I've never shared it publicly, but I'm, I want to share it with you so that you know that this, you know, I can't emphasize enough how careful people need to be with this. Um, in this dream, I saw a certain person that uh, was spreading, he, they were out in a field and they were spreading seed, just, you know, spreading, throwing seed out onto the ground. And in the dream, I was uh, made aware that, that the soil itself was contaminated. Um, and as the, you know, the, the seed was, was all thrown out, this person kind of walked through the field, very proud of themselves. And uh, what started to grow were like, like small plants and a flower here or there, but they were, they were kind of distorted. And um, all of a sudden, out of the ground came these big, ugly bugs of all different um, sizes and shapes. And they weren't bugs like we know bugs, uh, you know, insects in, <laughs> that we see out in the world. They were very different looking and very, um, they were also distorted um, and, and very aggressive. And very quickly, they ate up everything that grew. And um, I, don't, I don't think anyone needs to be a rocket scientist to understand the, the interpretation of that and what that means. But I was praying about a certain, one of these seers, and, uh, and that's the dream that I was given about this. And so it does damage, a lot of damage, um, and can do a lot of damage to people that watch it, that listen to it, that read it, that consume it, um, it, it can do a lot of damage to the spiritual life. Um, and, and sometimes even to the physical life, you know, where in, in, in cases where there's a lot of money sent and things like that, I've heard horror stories of people like selling their homes full on believing this stuff and, and donating the money. And then, you know, only to find out it was all a scam and, and they, they don't, they don't have a house. And so, Anyway, I wanted to share that dream with you because I think it's very, very important. And I, I can't emphasize this enough, um, especially to my viewers, that just be very, very careful and pray. Um, you know, spend the majority of time in prayer and God will give you the discernment of, of uh, you know, whether things are good or bad. And, um, and always remember that the... Uh, the authenticity of something like that really it lies with the church and so you know we're even the ones that have been approved say fatima and divine mercy we're not obligated to believe those um to attain salvation and to attain heaven not even to attain sanctity okay so if the church approaches that the ones that have been approved in that way um how much more cautious you know should we be of things that that have yet to be approved or um uh you know where they they haven't given a um and i'm, I'm speaking specifically of people um individuals okay um that that's where you know we need to approach that with with an extreme caution uh anyway i wanted to touch on that also i try i don't know if you guys like margaritas but i thought i would throw that in there and share it um the re the, it's like I said, the juice is good for you and there's a lot of different things you can do with it. So um, hopefully if you try it, you like it. I don't know if you will, you may not. I may just have a different kind of taste uh, for things, but I like, the, I like the juice and I like the margaritas like that. So they're, they're healthy too, like I said. And you don't even have to add a lot of tequila. You can just add a little bit of tequila, you know, kind of a nightcap or whatever and uh, help you relax and, um, and you're drinking good juice, so it's good for the body as well. So anyway, I'm gonna move on into this talk and I wanna talk about temptation. I've talked about this before, is seeing temptation as an opportunity uh, 
to do damage to the enemy and at the same time grow in faith and in virtue. Okay, and so I think from what I've learned in my own experience is to, um, is to always approach temptation uh, in humility. Okay, first and foremost, know that you're going to be tempted. Um, know there are times where you're not gonna be able to uh, win that battle, you're gonna fall. You know, you need to be able to forgive yourself, go to confession and move on. Um, and, and there are times where, uh, how do I say, it needs to, well, again, like I said, it needs to be approached in humility. Um, you know, because the, I think the thing is, is, again, in my own life, what I can say is that the victories, you know, where I've won victories, um, I've learned over a period of time that, you know, when you start winning victories at the very beginning, um, for some reason, I guess it's the devil, it's kind of pride, I think. It's just a process, a part of growing. Um, but then you think you can overcome anything. And, and that's, when, that's when you get, you know, when you trip. And so we have to be careful, we have to be humble, uh, we have to be prayerful. But if you approach temptation um, and view temptation not as a negative thing, but kind of flip it on its head and see it as an opportunity to not only do damage to the enemy, but to grow in virtue, to grow in faith, um, to grow in spirituality, um, then the, then it's seen more as, uh, as a positive than a negative. And I think sometimes when we fall, we can fall into a problem is when we view temptation as a negative, like I can't, I keep being tempted with this, or I keep doing this, or I keep, um, uh, you know, falling into this sin or whatever it is. Um, with habitual sin, the, you have to win that initial victory. You have to win that first one. And so every time you uh, every time you you win it, okay. When you when you win that initial battle, the next time it confronts you, if you persevere through it, then it will be easier to overcome every single time that you overcome it. And that's not to say that you won't be tempted again with the same thing, and definitely not to say that you won't be tempted again in some way, because we will always be tempted. And so, I guess uh, if I were to give an example, I would use myself as the example. And, um, you know, something recent and I, something I've really, I really never, you know, had a, um, you know, since I've come back to the church, I never really had a problem with. And, um, but was when I went through what I went through with, you know, with my family and that, and, and I think, you know, the first part of it was real emotional. And so there weren't, you know, there wasn't a lot of that stuff going on as far as temptation. It was more of grief and working through it and that kind of thing. But there, there was a time where it came to me where, you know, I realized, okay, well, you're, you know, you're single and you're celibate. And, you know, so the way I approached that was just the way I approach most things, right? I just kind of confront it head on and, um, and thought to myself, I think interiorly and probably subconsciously, okay, well, I'm not going to, you know, I haven't struggled with it before. I'm not going to be tempted, you know, to, to look or, you know, whatever. And, um, <laughs> you know, I'll just pray my way through it. And, you know, I, I won't, I'm not going to be affected by the temptation, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> that was uh, um, not wrong, you know, totally. And because it, I, I don't think I was ever in the position to be tempted. You know, it just never occurred to me. And so, and living in California, it's, it's not, uh, it doesn't make it any easier in California because it's basically, um, I don't know, ever all. Everybody, well, I won't say everybody. I would say the majority of women here in California, for whatever reason, like want to dress like a superhero. <laughs> so it's not a good thing. Everything's like just jumping out and attacking you. But the point that I'm making is that when you overcome, when you recognize the temptation and you overcome that temptation, you're going to grow in strength. You're going to grow in spirituality. You're going to grow in virtue and you're going to grow uh, in faith. <clears throat> and so when that temptation comes to you again, it's going to be easier to overcome um, the next time it comes around. And uh, I want to read um, from this little book here. It is a, a manual on spiritual warfare. I think I bought it or it may have been given to me by um, Father David. Um, I'm not sure. I know he gave me one like like house blessings for a husband or something. It was really a really cool book. It kind of had the same cover. Um, 
but he may have given me this one along with that. I can't remember, or I bought it. But this is the little book, and it's called uh, Manual for Spiritual Warfare. And there's a lot of good stuff in here. And every now and then, uh, you know, when I'm not in the scriptures or I'm not studying, uh, um, you know, the Diary of Faustina or the Catechism or something, every now and then I leave this book on the table and I just pick it up randomly and read from it. And I came across this um, today and I just wanted to share it with you. And this is from uh, Catherine of Siena and it is why God allows the devil to tempt us. Okay. And it says, um, I've appointed the devil to tempt and to trouble my creatures in this life. St. Catherine of Siena reports that our Lord said to her, I've done this not so that my creatures will be overcome, but so that they may overcome, proving their virtue and receiving from me the glory of victory. And no one should fear any battle or temptation of the devil that may come to him because I have made my creatures strong and I have given them strength of will fortified by the blood of my son. Neither the devil nor other creature can control this free will because it is yours, given to you by me. By your own choice then, you can hold it or let it go or let go of it as you please. It is a weapon if you place it in the hands of the devil, it right away becomes a knife that he'll use to stab and kill you. On the other hand, if you don't place this knife, that is your will into the hands of the devil. That is, if you, can, if you don't consent to temptations and harassments, you will never be injured by the guilt of sin or any temptation. Instead, you'll actually be strengthened by the temptation. As long as you open the eyes of your mind and see my love and to understand why I allowed you to be tempted so you could develop virtue by having it proved. My love permits these temptations for the devil is weak. He can do nothing by himself unless I allow him. So I let him tempt you because I love you, not because I hate you. I want you to conquer, not be conquered, and to come to a perfect knowledge of yourself and of me. Um, and that, that's a powerful little reading. You know, when I read that today, I was, I was blown away by it. Now, I, I know that I've spoken about this uh, in previous videos, is viewing temptation this way. Um, but the end of this is, is so profound to me. Um, the last sentence, I want you to conquer, not be conquered, and come to perfect knowledge of yourself and of me. You know, one of the ways that we come to knowledge of self is recognizing in our lives where we're tempted. It, it, it reveals us to us. And when we overcome those temptations in our lives, then we begin, the, the grace of God, the power of God, the Holy Trinity begins to operate in the soul and in doing so, we come to a greater knowledge of God. And so, you know, when I spoke on this, this is exactly what I was talking about. Although uh, Catherine of Siena articulates it in a much better way that I, than I ever could. Um, or our, I should, should I say our Lord to St. Catherine of Siena. Temptation, when it's viewed in the positive, this is how, how we should view it when we move in our spiritual life. Um, when we're confronted with temptation, the first thing that we need to understand, rather than falling into the temptation or, or you know, starting to shake with fear, oh my gosh, I'm being tempted, the first thing that needs to come to our mind, okay, God has allowed this and he's allowed it so I can overcome it. And, and so the whole focus shifts from the temptation to God. And when we understand that God is allowing this temptation for us to overcome it, and he'll never allow us to be tempted beyond our strength, that's scriptural, okay, that's biblical, then when we overcome it, we come to greater knowledge of self and we come to greater knowledge of God. And in doing so, as I said, we grow in virtue, we grow in strength, we grow in faith. Um, and the more we do this, the more often we overcome temptation uh, the stronger we become. You know, one of the other things that I would point out here 
uh, with this reading that I just read is that Jesus says the devil is weak. He, he can, uh, he cannot, uh, he cannot tempt us, uh, any more than he's allowed to tempt us. And sometimes we're going to be hit with some very powerful temptations. Okay. I know in my own life, um, since I've been alone, um, there have been a number of times where, where I've been approached, uh, by women and, and I knew, I knew what was going on. And, um, sometimes it was veiled as good. Sometimes it was just in your face bad. And, uh, or should I say in my face bad, but I, you know, I was able to confront it. I was able to overcome it. And I think the reason was, um, is because I, I have come to understand in my own spiritual life, in my own growth, I've come to learn that when I am tempted, it is being allowed by God for my own good. And when I approach temptation in that way, when we approach temptation in that way, it's a lot easier um, to begin to win the victory. You know, it's almost like it flips the table and, and uh, you know, you, you, got, you kind of got a card up your sleeve, you know, when you're playing poker with the devil that way. And um, it's just, like I say, I think it's an important thing to remember that, that you know, Satan cannot tempt us beyond our strength, uh, that he is weak, um, that he only has as much power as, as God allows, that he can't tempt us beyond our strength, again, uh, again, which is scriptural, okay? And to understand that these opportunities are given to us to grow in virtue. And every time we overcome a temptation like that, if you can imagine in your mind all of heaven um, exploding with this great, uh, you know, hurrah of victory, that's what happens. Because every time we overcome a temptation, we do damage to the devil. You know, as Jesus said to St. Catherine of Siena, it's like a knife. And that knife, think about this, that knife is our will, our free will. And we can choose to do the right thing with our free will, or we can choose to do the wrong thing with our free will. Um, and if we choose to do the right thing, then we do damage to Satan. We do damage to the kingdom of darkness with that knife, which is our will. If we decide to take that will, that knife, and hand it to the devil, um, basically falling into that temptation, then it's as Jesus said, he begins to stab, wound, and murder us. Um, I'll share this with you. I, I did, uh, I, I spoke a little bit on the Feast of Divine Mercy at the parish, and I want to share a story with you that I heard from a priest that I know. And I want, uh, the reason I do is because I want you to understand um, how much of a threat you actually are to the kingdom of darkness. Um, this priest was getting ready to baptize some children. <clears throat> and... Uh, as he was walking up to the baptismal font to baptize these children, he was given a vision and saw these uh, these demons ready there, standing around these, they were around these children, these babies, these infants, ready to devour them, ready to uh, um, basically ravage them. And with, with each child that he baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, these demons fled like um, like scared dogs, and again, this is this is kind of is some, this is a story that I shared when I spoke at uh, the Feast of Divine Mercy this year at our parish. It's only about a ten minute talk, but what it reveals is that even the infant that is baptized becomes a threat to Satan. Even the infant that is baptized becomes a threat to the kingdom uh, of of darkness and the kingdom of hell, and the demons flee. From a, from a child of God that has been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, with that being said, a, an infant um, is not even of age um, to understand the, all of this. And so imagine how much more the devil fears a baptized Catholic uh, that has an understanding of this, that understands free will, 
and chooses to hold on to that will and use that knife to do damage to the kingdom of, of Satan. That's how powerful we are. This is what Jesus means by when he says, I have made my creatures powerful. He has given us a free will and we can use that will to build up the kingdom of God and tear down the kingdom of darkness or we can use that will to hand a knife to the devil himself. May God bless you, may he keep you, may he cause his face to shine upon you, and may he grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.